Hey guys, welcome back to DTLO Replay. <laughs> I'm always getting the intro wrong, so apologies. But no, thank you for coming along. We're gonna jump right into peak. Um, we're gonna see if this lap's even peak. Uh, does he even reach gear fifth level? We'll, we'll, we'll see. And you know, before I get into the bulk of the video, make sure you follow us on X, LinkedIn, or Discord to keep in touch with the BTLO community and SBT community because we're thriving. We're seeing new faces every day, people getting the certs, people getting internships, position. We're seeing it and, and, and it's beautiful. And I hope these videos, as we keep making more and more of them, help you in your respective careers. All right, let's get started. So we have Pete. This is a retired lab, so feel free to do write-ups or other videos off of it. We're gonna get straight into the scenario. Dwight works as a web developer at Mountaintop Solution in Chicago. He reports unusual activity originating from the private network 10.xxxx and the logs in the application development servers. Dwight also added that the server should only be accessed directly from the console or from his laptop via a secure shell, which is in the network 192 blah, 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 blah. Can you investigate this anonymy? Anonymy? <laughs> Anonymy. Anonymously, I sorry, my A's are quite poor. Eh? <laughs> you are provided with the following logs already ingested into elk. So, wow, another elk lab. This is my third elk lab. This is crazy. Oh, let's see what we got here. So, we got some logs here. Cool, cool, cool. So, I already got the lab booted up. Does full screen even work? I guess this is full screen. So, sweet. All right, let's see what kind of questions we got so far. Damn, we got a lot. Ugh. All right, we're gonna get started. So what we could do, um, I mean, we could boot up Elk, but let me just check the investigation folders. We have the logs here, which is actually pretty cool. Um, so we could do both. I, I'm still gonna spin up Elk. All right, <laughs> I'm back. I got Elastic booted up. So that is really, really good. So we have this on standby. We're gonna reference this from time to time. All right. Put that below as you can see this was my terminal <laughs> still working on my linux guys chill out minimize that and let's start with question one what is the host name of the infected server and what's funny about this lab is i, I was actually just working on a i guess you could say a web server lab not too long ago so i'm curious to see how this looks like um let us look at the let's see hopefully can we open up cnc's Oh, we can. Oh, this actually looks really good, actually. This looks really good. Um, let's see. Yeah, send that to that. What is the question again? What is the host name of the infected server? Uh, let's see if we can find a host name here. Time set message. App ser oh, App Server Chicago. Is that in the format? Yeah, App Server Chicago. Yep, that looks like is it. CSV. Let's put that in there. I'm really, I'm just, I really like how these logs look. They look really, really good. Um, what was it? App Serve? Serve, right? Chicago? Yep. And you can tell because... We have the dates and all those stuff, and it you see the server right here. It's, it's common name, okay? App Server Chicago. Yep, that makes sense. All right, so that's that. That was a little fun one. Question two: The attacker got into the server via what service port? I shouldn't have closed that. <laughs> um, damn. Okay, I shouldn't have closed that. There's many ways of. Let me open that again. There's many ways of finding this out. So this is a lot of information to parse to a screen. What we're gonna do, let's let's go back to our terminal. I'm gonna place this here. Put this there. And let us let's do a filter um on this log. So actually what I should have done, let me see LS. Is it within desktop? Desktop, CD investigation, CD logs, LS, so we could cat from here. 
what I want to cat out is the sur service port. Let me see something. Authentication failure. This is actually really, this is very interesting. I just did a similar lab like this. Failed public key for Vagrant from port. Is this really the port? 51700 secure shell. Yo, I, I literally just did a lab like this. <laughs> I literally just did a lab like this. Um, here, let me let me print it out clearer or in a clear view so you guys can see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a cat. Oh, that's crazy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very shocked. I literally just completed a lab like this last night. I wish I played this first before I finished my lab because I really like the way they have the output out. But it, it's a Windows lab. It could have been it could have been a Linux lab, but it's actually a Windows lab. Uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot to put it in quotes. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Wow, you see how cleaner this looks? So we're okay. We're getting a lot of fail. Yeah, we're getting a lot of fail type stuff um uh, I, oh, oh you know what we should do hold on we're seeing all the failures remember what the question said the attacker got into the server via what point so we don't want to focus on the failure too much we want to see if we could find the actual connection where the attacker got accepted all right, so I mean, I could just uh, let me see. If I, I mean, we could look through this pretty much with our eyes and just scroll until we see something accepted. Accepted. I want to strain my eyes too much. Let me. Um. Oh wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Right there, I think I think that I think that's I think that's it. I think that's it. So, I think that's our <laughs> I think that's our answer, guys. Is it? Is it actually? Let me see. Secure shell. Accept the password from Vagrant. Oh, hold on! I'm getting the wrong port. It's actually the one ab above. Connection. From that's the IP, from port. On this port four four three two. I think that's our uh, see connection connection. Yeah, I mean, hold on. Sorry if I'm going back and forth. The attacker got in the server via what service that port? So we're seeing a lot of connections here, as as you see right here, connection. From here, this port connection. So it's the same port the hacker is getting into. It's the same possible. It's the same port right here. 4432, 4432, 4432. Now the initial port might be changing, but the destination port on the server, it's static. As you can see, it's very static. So yeah, I think that's our answer. And that's the attacker's IP. So I'm going to put that in actually. Oh, via what service? The service is... Secure... Wait, hold on. Secure shell right here. I think that's the service. Yeah, secure shell. Let's put that in real quick. And the port was... 44322. Wait, four four three two two. Yeah. All right. So just to circle back on that, how we found that answer. Let's see where we're at. Attacker got in via the server. So what we did, I, I forgot the whole syntax. We looked at fail logons. All right, from a certain IP, which was very common. As you can see, is this IP, and you can see the the attacker's using many users, Azure user. 
Um, what else other users are using? Azure, let's see what else. Was it only Azure? I could have sworn I saw more users. Uh, invalid user. This, let's see, this goes over it. User, so the attacker was pretty much trying to brute force. Yeah, that's the term, brute force their way into the server. So I used that IP the attacker was brute forcing with, which was the 10.0.2.5. And then look back at the question and the question actually gave us some, like a hint. The attacker eventually got in. So pretty much I looked around this log to see something, a exception or connection, whatever. And as you can see, connection from attacker's IP was enabled on the server's IP. So it ended up, he, the attacker ended up getting in. But what, through what port on the server IP? That one right there. And it, as you can see right here, it's, very, it's a very common port, okay? In, in this scenario. So hopefully that makes sense. What is the tool to crack passwords? Sorry, crack the password that he could have possibly used. I think we just answered that question already. No, 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 I don't know. Wait, password brute force. Oh, okay. The, the method was brute forcing. Now the actual tool. Um, <laughs> this is a good one. So what we're going to do actually, let me actually minimize this. We'll come back to that. Let's check the access logs. See if that opens up for us. I don't want my screen to be too cluttered. Um, so I'm going to be very careful with the amount of logs I'm opening. I might just close this. I'm not sure if we need that, but we'll come back to it. If so why is this not opening? Is this, oh man. Ah, this sucks. <laughs> why is this log not opening? We might have to go back into the terminal to even take a look at that log. Um, Man, that really sucks. Here, here, this is what I'll do. You always gotta improvise when it comes to uh, stuff like this. I'm going to, let me just make a new tab. Ah, this didn't put me in the same folder, unfortunately. LS, let's get back into investigations. I forgot Linux is case sensitive. Logs. Again, it's always a method. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a I believe the head command against what was that log? Let me see something. Apache. Now it wants to open up. Oh my gosh. So pretty much what I was gonna do, I was running the, I was gonna run the head command against the Apache log. So this must be a lot yeah, this is a lot of freaking data. Jeez. Oh shoot, more to open up. Oh, that's not good. Let me full screen this. this is, gosh, this is a lot of data. I mean, looking at it, and more is popping up. Looking at it from the human eye, this is very, very, um, <laughs> very intimidating. What we could do, we could still use, we could still go back to the CLI, and sorry for the pings, but we could still go back to the CLI and see if we could filter for, see what the question's asking for. What is the tool used to crack the password that he possibly used? Um, we we know the number of tools, brute forcing tools are very limited. I mean, we could play the guessing game, but in security, we want to be very, we want stuff on paper. We want proof. We want receipts. All right. I'm not going to be playing guessing game. Oh, hacker probably used this tool. No, no, no. We want, <laughs> that's what logs are for. Proof, right? Let's see. So we have the attacker's IP. All right, the 10 dot. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, this filter is dangerous. All right, I'll. I'll... Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to have to come back off screen with a better filter so we can better parse through uh, this thing. 
Yeah, because this, this is not good. <laughs> All right, I'm back. <laughs> I had to do a lot of research on this. Um, how to find a better method. Uh, productivity is great. Methodology is very important. So yes, I could realistically shift sift through that log. I presented with you guys earlier. What was it? This one? I could go through this, but look at this. I'm scrolling down. The wheel's not even going down. This will take me too much time. So did some research. Uh, let's see if I can find that thing again. Did some research. Found a great cat or you know great filter pertaining to um, what's it called pertaining to the column you see right here. So I don't even know if I can scroll up. Pretty much that filter. Pretty much filter out some of the column things here or rows or whatever you. I, I technically it's a column. Um, depending on the way you're looking at it. So I, I filtered for that and this is what I found. So I catted out Apache underscore access CSV. That's the file. Grep the IP, the attacker's IP in question, which we figured out in question two. All right, added some filters, uh, which correlate to this dollar sign three. That correlates to the client's IP. All right, which is a hacker in this thing. Print seven or dollar sign seventeen correlates to the user agent. All right, I have some other filters to sort and all that good stuff, and it came out with this tool, <laughs> Hydra, which I guess is a it, it's a great brute forcing tool. I wouldn't I didn't think about that at first. Um, and for those that don't know what Hydra is, uh, let me actually boot up another screen. Why is my thing in black? Hydra tool. It's a password logger cracker. Or if I said that right, that's what Hydra is. Let me see. Yeah, brute, there we go. Brute forcing tools. That That's the three words we need. Or two words, technically. Brute forcing tools. All right. So if we go back to our machine. Password brute forcing tool. Yeah, Hydra. Makes sense. Yeah. What was the first command executed by the hackers? Um, or sorry, attacker. So this is a good one. I don't think we're going to find that in here because this is just an access log. So I'm going to jump out of here. I'm going to make another tab, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, get back into that folder. So we could see where we could. Oops. I'm trying to work on my typing skills as well, too. Oh, actually, hold on. Did I just jump me already? Yeah. So let's see. We could look at the. Let's see. We went through auth logs. I think we went through auth logs in the beginning. We did Apache access key. We could do audit logs. I am not going to bother opening up. Opening. Actually, I do have to open up audit logs. Um. Actually, hold on. Ugh. Okay, this sucks. Let me just see something real quick. This is probably going to freeze my screen. Audit CSV. Hopefully that pops up quite fast. Um, I will come back. I'll come back off screen. And I'll show you my my command and my syntax um, regarding the, the thing. Let me just double check real quick. Yeah, this is gonna take forever to come back. So uh, I'll see you guys in a quick interruption. I, my screen finally loaded, uh, or the logs finally loaded. So again, this is a lot of stuff here. This is a lot. Um, yeah, this is some interesting stuff. We'll come back to this. I'll, I'll have. I'll find a better way to filter this out. This is yeah. This is way too too much data. All right. See you guys on playback. <laughs> guys i'm back wow it's been like 20 minutes Woo! um lab shut down laggy i don't know a lot of stuff happened but did some research i don't feel like starting elk again but i'm just doing it i'm doing the lab via cli found this command or great filter to use against the current where is it um sorry the current log which is audit 
dot t just for clarification we are on question oh this looks kind of different as well too question four right what is the first command executed by the attacker so i ran this uh command all right and what we're going to do i'm going to throw this in i actually already threw it in a test uh csv so let's look at this together but let me just cat out the output audit underscore test csv yeah there's a lot of stuff here okay yeah there's a lot of stuff here oh let's see something real quick oops Let me actually clear this up. This is very, very intimidating. Let me go in here real quick. Logs, let me see if I can view it from here. There's something I wanna look at. Oh, okay, let's see. Okay, this is way better. This is a way better view. There we go. All right, so the filter previously uh showcases command line uh type uh, inputs from the attacker now what i want to do and let me see if i could change this preferences show line numbers there we go okay cool this is gonna make it very easy to what's it called oh, i forgot the word <laughs> very easy to showcase stuff so let me see Again, this is very, very, hold on, uh, command line interface, uh, t -t -t -t. The time. What, what I'm looking at right now, remember the time in the previous uh questions when the attacker first got into the server Do you, does anybody remember that time that was i believe it was on the it's on the second uh sorry february 2020 was it february? yeah february 2021 if I'm, I'm not mistaken all right now the time it happened at was around seven uh seven eleven is that, it, it might even saying that right. It was around seven o'clock. <laughs> seven eleven. Is that is that how you say it? Nine thirty five. Seven. Yeah, seven eleven a.m. Wow, that just sounds strange to say, but it was it was around seven eleven a.m. All right, so I went down to line nineteen as you see right here. You see that time seven eleven a.m. All right, and then you're seeing right here the command right here. Command ls. You see the exe because commands in Linux they're pretty much exe they're they're pro they're um, programs pretty much and they're looking in the bin directory by um, yeah and as you can see the, the attacker to use ls id u name and then so on and so on so let's double check real quick I mean yeah I think that's our command pretty much ls again it's not intimidating. This is a type of living off the land attack. For those that are not familiar with that concept, this just show you that uh, living off the land. Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's go to CrowdStrike. Oh, <laughs> what the heck was that? Uh, pretty much living off the land attack is where hackers use native tools, okay? To make it far more difficult to detect, uh, you know, behavior. So native tools, LS is a native tool. This is used to navigate or, or show the contents of a file within the CLI uh, preview, but hackers do, could do it for bad things as well too. So just wanted to throw that in there. It was a limiting off uh, L -O -L -T, L -O -T -L attack. So let's go back to that. What was it this one? And put it in that command, LS, yeah. So just to recap on that, I, I know <laughs> I was everywhere, but pretty much remember when the attacker got in, 
use that date. I'm not going to pull up the logs again because everything crashed. Use that date when the attacker got in, correlate it with the logs, the audit logs, which show, you know, showcases commands and all that stuff, and see what command was executed right after that time or during the time the hacker got in. And as you can see, it was LS on line 19, okay? So we got that. How many more we got? We got a couple more. What is the first domain the attacker connects to from the server? What is the name of the file he downloads? So this is a two part question. Um, okay, let's do this real quick. I don't think we need this anymore. I'm still good. And this is a man-made log. Oh, I, say, I, I just made that log up using some filters and stuff like that. So that is not a part of the actual lab, just in case for those jumping right now, confused, that's not part of the lab. What we could do, let me see, I'm trying to think of the logs we already went through already. We went through off, Apache, audit. Did we go to audit? I think we went through audit. I I'm not too sure, but let's, let's go back to that. It's been a while. And what we could do pretty much, I mean, the answer, the question pretty much gives us a hint. Hold on. What is the first domain the attacker connects to from the server? And what is the name of the file he downloads? So pretty much from what we could do right here, we can still stay inside of the uh, CLI or, or the terminal. And we can run a filter from here, keywords domain and downloads. So I don't consider myself a Linux expert. Let's see if I can type that out. I'm not sure why I'm typing that. And but what we could do, we could filter for keywords like HTTPS or curl or git or wget. All right. So let's do that. Uh, issue with my command. I was wondering why it wasn't running. I didn't enclose this in parentheses. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Man, we got a lot of data. Man, oh gosh, this is a lot. This is a lot. Let me see. Oh, hold on. Look at this, guys. Look at this. So, Len P. So, if if anybody took a, a penetration testing course or breadting course, you'll know what line Len piece is. It's pretty much a, a tool used on Windows operating system for enumeration. Um, if I'm not mistaken, not that I mean, we could look it up right now. Screw it. Let's just stop talking about it and look it up. Uh, Lin -tees. Oh, shoot. No, that's actually Window, uh, Linux. I was confused. I was, I was getting around with WinPs. Now, WinPs, that's the Windows version. Linpeas is for Linux. My apologies. Okay, my apologies. All right. So that's what's going on right now. Searching for p possible pathways for privilege escalation type attempts. So we go back here. Oh, actually, what was the question? I, I forgot. First, oh, the first domain. That is technically the first domain. All right. And what is the name of the file the attacker downloads? Okay, I don't think they want this whole thing. I just think they, they just want the domain name and then the file right here. Because this is a GitHub link. Yeah, this is pretty much a GitHub link. So I'm just going to... Hold on. Sorry for the pain. I'm just gonna put the, I forgot what they call this in a web, web dev, but I'm just gonna put the, the URL, just the, the base, just the TLDR, sorry, TLD domain and then the protocol, or actually no, I'm not even gonna include the protocol. Does it ask for that? Oh no, no, oh no, it's right there. The sub domain TLD. Okay, there we go. I, I, I knew I was stripping. So raw github.com, right? And 
shoot, I think it was a comma. Lens piece. Damn, what the heck? Hold on. Oh, the file name. Okay, okay. There's no way. How am I getting this wrong? My apologies. Cut this out. Subdomain TLD. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. This is why you just don't assume. Is I thought it was GitHub. This is, what is this? Git hub use your content all right so something's going on here my apologies it was man and this is blocking the screen too that hold on let me just do it like this because this, this is really getting me messed up there we go put that there And let's correct this. This is raw, raw GitHub user content dot com. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Uh, what is this? What is this? Attacker identifies version of binary and tries to exploit it. What is the utility and what is the vulnerability he attempts to exploit? Uh, um, wait, what's a GERD? Identifies version of binary and tries to exploit it. What is the utility and what is the vulnerability he attempts to exploit? I'm going to need some Context with this. Let me see utility. What is the utility and what is the vulnerability types of exploit? Is this mentioned in the logs? Man, these logs look so horrible. Hold on. There has to be a better way to clean this up. I'm sorry. Let me just make sure. Oh, I have a question mark here. Hold on. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is way better. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so, oh, bam, right there. There we go. And then we have the one uh, that the attacker was downloading. So this is the exploit right here, a lot of code. So going back to the answer, man, we're everywhere. Oh, question I should say. See what is the utility and the vulnerability? Uh, excuse me. The attacker attempts to. So we got the CVE um utility that will be right here if we go back to this page. Pseudo. So I'm just gonna see twenty twenty one three one five six three one five six pseudo three one five six pseudo. So let's try that out. Oh shoot, I forgot already. Pseudo. This lab is this lab is killing me, bro. <laughs> uh, we're almost done. Almost done. Exploit didn't work. Attacker again. Wait, attacker again downloads a script from a remote server to perform a different action. What is the domain name of the remote server and what is the file they downloaded? Um, we could go back to our previous upload or logs and look at the third one and I don't know what the heck 
That domain is, that's a weird looking domain. All right, there we go. <laughs> man, this lab is crazy, man. All right, attacker executes the downloaded script. What is the URL of the script that it connects to? You, wait, URL of the script that, oh, let me see something real quick. The hacker executes the download script. What is the URL of the script it connects to? Wouldn't it be the, wouldn't it be this one? Cause it follows right after that. And we're still filtering for HTTP, any type of HTTP request. Um, see, upload, uploaded to be, sorry. Upload, they downloaded that script. And right after that, it was this, right? Execute the downloaded script. What is the URL the script's, what is the URL the script connects to? Oh. Okay, wouldn't it be? Interesting, okay. What are the local files that have been downloaded in the malicious activity? This cannot be the same. Oh no, okay. Local files downloaded in the malicious activities. Uh, let me actually zoom this in because I'm not, I'm not seeing everything I want to see. Oh, hold on. But yeah, when you look deeper into the log, okay. That was throwing me off. That was really, because uploads are part of the URL. But it looks like they're uploading stuff into like passwords and all these other stuff. This is crazy. Um, what are the local files that have been downloaded in the malicious activity? Wait, wait, hold on. That, that's it right there. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Upload at no, they're they're curling it. Curl, which is and let me just actually look this up just to show you guys I'm not tripping. Curl in Linux. Command line tool used to transfer data to or from a server. Okay. Go back to here. They're curling this thing right here. Etsy password and temp BTLO zip. All right. Look at the question again. Make sure I got it right. What are the files that have been downloaded? So I... I mean, even if they're downloading to or from... Bro or from that's an interesting that's an interesting wording one. I, I might be getting it wrong, but let's try it out. Let's see password temp btlo zip. Right? That's it? Oh uh, no, I made an error. Okay, so they downloaded it. They downloaded it in the malicious activity okay all right final question how many files did the attacker delete um we could just well, let me clear all this junk up it's too much junk we could we could use our previously used command this one and we could just we could just edit it. So I'm gonna, edit, I'm gonna get this out and just do a grep for RM and everyone knows RM or hopefully everyone knows that is the command used to remove files, not directories. Well, you can remove directories if you add the flag to it, but Snow is, is used to remove files in Linux. So 
See if I could shorten it down somehow. I'm trying to, oh, hold on. I left this in here. Ugh. That is not supposed to be there. All right, so this is the command that's gonna help us find how many files the attacker deleted. Hey, okay, so we see RMUs in this instance right here. So that's one. Wait, hold on. I want to see the specific files the attacker delete. And we could do that by putting in a, let me see, I'm trying to think. The time, because we see the first initial use of the command here. So let's put that time in and see if we can get more. Oh, shoot. Did I delete the, oh, all right, let's bring that back. We can see the specific files at that time when it first occurred. So let me actually delete that and let me actually add a time filter, which I could get rid of all this junk right here. I don't need this anymore. And then we can put in that initial time filter of when it first was used. Uh, colon 18.47.319. I think that's going to give us the initial the files that were deleted, hopefully. Oh, right here. Yeah. So we have, so A1 goes over this file, the script, Python script was deleted. A2, the second file, BTLO zip. A3, fake password, and A4, lion peach shell. So these files were deleted. Looks like the attacker tried to do some cleanup, all right, before they left the premises. So very, very sneaky. Um, it looks like we have a MITRE right here. Yeah, a file deletion. Yeah, <clears throat> and you could go more into detail on that on the MITRE ID uh, site. But yeah, it looks like we have four files that were deleted at that time, all right, here. So, and this, it's more safer to do this because although it gets this, it looks like five, but it was really four, all right? So it's safe to just go deep into the initial time, the first time the tool was used, and you can get more detailed information, all right? So let's put that in here. Sweet, yeah pretty good so yeah pretty very interesting lab challenging challenging um but it was, it was a it was a really good workout i think i learned a lot with my linux skills but thanks for watching be sure to like and subscribe to never miss a video in the meantime remember to join our discord and tune in every friday at 6 p.m bst for btl replay thanks everyone see you next time hopefully you found this video valuable cheers mm -hmm.